We called to the Bima, our bat mitzvah, Lily Goldberg, her mom, Juliana Goldberg, Renee Goldberg, Stella Maris, Kubota, Yone, Juodinus, Beatrice, Juodinus, Joyce Fine, Hilda Altman, Lisa Goldberg, Devin Goldberg, for the honor of lighting the Shabbat candles. Good Shabbos. So, every now and again, people send me emails of suggestions. One suggestion is, you know, Rabbi, when people scatter throughout the sanctuary, invite them to come move closer and sit closer in. So this is a test to see if it will work. All right? This is from a congregant now. Would you guys move a little bit this way? We can call you out by name. A little bit. This is what I thought. Some will, some won't. If I had you jump two or three rows in the main sanctuary, would you do it? <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank you. Well, good Shabbos, everyone. We have a lot of nice visitors in honor of our bat mitzvah. We will look forward to worshiping with you tomorrow morning for Lily's bat mitzvah. So let's just take a moment. I know that many of you are sitting next to people you know, but perhaps there is someone behind you, in front of you. Wish them good Shabbos. Introduce yourselves. All right.
All right, now you know why you had to sit near each other. It's kind of hard to shake hands way, way far away. That's the beginning of community feeling. So let's give thanks for these newfound friends, if you will. 127, let's read this prayer of thanksgiving together, and then we'll join in the Lachado D. 127 at the bottom. We offer thanks, O God, for this Shabbat which unites us in faith and hope, for Shabbat holiness which inspires sacred living, for Shabbat memories glowing even in darkness, for Shabbat peace born of friendship and love, we offer thanks and blessing, O God. L'Chad Odi 138. to greet the Shabbat bride, verse 9. Boi v'shalom ateret v'ala gam besimcha uvsohola toch emune am segula Shabbat, Pene Shabbat, Nekabe, Yalala, Lachadadi, Yalala, Likrat Kala, Yalala, Pene Shabbat, Pene Shabbat, Nekabe. One hundred and forty four Chatzi Kaddish. We 
Ikadava Ikadashame Rabba Belmadi Brahiro Te Vamik Mahute Beha Yehon Uvyomehon Uphaye de Hope Yisrael Bangala Bangala Uvisman Kari Vime Ru Amen Yeheshme Rabba Mevora Elamu Mame Maya Yitbara Yitbara Vishtaba Vidba Ar Vidrama Vidnase Vitadar Vitale Vitala Shemeji Kridusha Brihu Elami Kobir Hata Vishirata Tushbehata Vene Mata Damir and Bama Vimeru Amen. We rise again for the Barahu. Page 146. One hundred and forty-eight. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light, transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tzavaot is your name. Ever-living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on evening. Baruch atah Adonai, amari varavi. We turn the page. As you taught Torah to those whose names I bear, teach me Torah too, for its mystery beckons. Yet I struggle with its truth. You meant Torah for me. Did you mean the struggle for me too? Don't let me struggle alone. Help me to understand, to be wise, to listen, to know. Lead me into the mystery. Blessed is God's glorious majesty forever and ever. You may be seated.
We read responsively on the bottom of page 157. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. From bondage in Egypt, we were delivered at Sinai. We bound ourselves to your way. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue to work for the dead, in the nation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the glory of the Spirit. Besimcha Rabba Vyamru Chulam. Mi Chamocha Baili Madonai. Mi kamocha ne darba kodesh nora teilot o sefele. Mi kamocha baeli madonai. Mi kamocha ne darba kodesh nora teilot. Oh, say, Fele, who is like you, who is like you, who is like you, Adore. Techa Rahu Vanecha Boke Ayam Lifne Moshe Miriam Zeli Anu Veamru Adonai. Thank you. 
Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up waiting to do your will. We sing this Hashki Venu in honor of Camp Newman, that our campers may soon sing it again on those grounds. Hashki Venu Adonai Eloheinu Lishalom, Lishalom, Vehamidenu Shomreinu Lechayim. Ufros aleinu sukach lo mecha, Ufros aleinu sukach lo mecha, Ah, Amen. Shelter us beneath thy wings, O Adonai, keep us safe from harmful things. Adonai, keep us safe throughout the night till we wake with morning's light. Teach us God wrong from right. a lot of slow melodies for our prayers tonight. I guess that's the mood that I'm in, but uh, we'll speed it up. Page 162. I need Magnolia, where is she? Shabbat la asot et hashabat lidorotam beritolam veshamru vene Israel et hashabat la asot et hashabat lidorotam beritolam beni uvein bene. Hashabbat, la asot et hashabbat, ledorotam, beritolam, ki sheshet, yamim, asa adonai, et hashemaim, vet haret. Okay, I see you. Vishamru, vene Israel. Et hashabat, la asot et hashabat, ledorotam, beritolam, uvayom, hashvi, shavat, vayinafash, shavat, vayinafash, vishamru v'nei Yisrael. Hashabbat, la asot et hashabbat, ledorotam, 
very tolam vishamru v'nei Yisrael et hashabat la'asot et hashabat le'dorotam very tolam yeah it's just not the same without her for our guests, we have an eight-year-old who does this as a duet with me, and uh, it's pretty epic. She's way better than me. 164, we rise for the tefillah. And so we learn, pray as if everything depended on God. Act as if everything depended on you. Adonai sefatai tiftahu fia gite hila teha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atadonai Eloheinu velohei avotenu veimotenu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzka, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rahel, Elohe Leia, Ha El Hagadol, Hagi Bor, Vehanara, El El Yon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Vikone Hako. Vizoher hasteya vot vimahot ume vige ula leave neve nehem Leman shemo beava Melek ozer umashia um again Baruk atadanai Magain Avraham vidas ratsara Atagi borle lamadanai Mehaye hako Atarav Leoshia, Mashiha Ruach, Lorid Hagashem, Mehakel Hai Behesed, Mehaye Hakobe Rakamim Ramim, So Mek Noflim Verathe Olim, Uma Tir Asirim, Umekayem Memunato. We continue in silent devotion using the words on the right or left side of the page or the words within our hearts until page 180. When you have completed your prayers, please be seated.
tasim le'olam Shalom Rav O Yisrael Amcha tasim le'olam Ki ata Shalom Rav O Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Shalom Rav O Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam V'tov Be'inecha Levarech Et Amcha Israel, bechol eit uvechasha, bishlomecha. Shalom Rav, Yisrael amcha, tasim leolam. Shalom Rav. Tassim le'olam, Tassim le'olam, Tassim le'olam. Healing takes many forms. So does healing of the soul and the medicine that is brought from places unexpected. So I got this package from Danielle Wiener, Temple Beth El, in Fort Myers, Florida. So she wrote me, Dear Rabbi Axelrod, I'm Danielle Wiener, the art teacher in our religious school at Temple Beth El in Fort Myers, Florida. After Hurricane Irma, we received cards from other students that we did not know. I was touched and inspired by their mitzvot and wanted to pay it forward. I taught my students how to marble the paper we used, and then we constructed these peace doves. <coughs> these are really nice. Mm -hmm. We hope these cards and heartfelt sentiments of the children bring some peace, joy, and healing to near to me. We wish you peace. The shalom. Danny Wiener. So I have a whole little bunch here. My wife is thinking of doing something creatively so we can have everybody look at them. But Cantor is going to read just a few of the, the cards real quick. Dear Congregation Nair Tamid, Shalom. We wish you peace. Love, Olivia from Temple Beth El of Fort Myers, Florida. Dear congregation near to me, I hope the terrible tragedy is not permanent and that you will all stay positive and have strong minds and hope for the best. Love, Sophie Morris at Temple Bethel in Florida. And love if you believe anything is possible. Dear congregation near to me, shalom. Hope everything is well. We wish you peace, health, and happiness. Love, Zoe Sachs. They had, a they had a rubric. <laughs> there was one that was different. I, I read it. <laughs> they, they wish us lots of happiness and peace, which is very sweet. And their art is beautiful. I like the one who wished us lots of P-E-A-S. <laughs> lots of P's. <laughs> Buttercup likes frozen peas. <laughs> All right, we will build on that sentiment of healing. And if you have names of loved ones, 
that you want to include in your prayers, please stand and say their names now. Just say their names, as many names as you would like. We continue to pray for our community as it heals. We all stand together in solidarity. Please be seated. So about once a month, we like to celebrate the anniversaries. This month, I wasn't sure. Does anyone have a wedding anniversary? Oh, we do. Perfect. Come on up. We have any others? Come on up. That's great. We try to reach out to the congregation and make phone calls. And uh, we've been doing this a couple years, so maybe people feel, well, a blessing every 10 years is good enough. <laughs> Come on down all the way here. Oh, my goodness. Jack and Wayne. <laughs> all right, so I just want to reconfirm. This is for wedding anniversary blessings. All right, so Jack wants to leave the stage. No, all right, no, he, he told him he can't tell that joke. Okay, so um, first of all, where, where were you married? In uh, Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio, Which, at a temple? Uh, no. No, where, where did you get married in, in Columbus, Ohio? In my parents' backyard. Oh, what, was, what, what was the address? <laughs> <laughs> in Gehanna, there's a temple there now. Yeah, that's great. Very good. I was a rabbi in Columbus, Ohio for a little bit. How many years ago did you get married? 32. 30? I was a rabbi. You didn't call me to do the wedding. What happened? <laughs> uh, I've, you know, what is this? Did Rabbi Apotheker do it? Gary Huber. Oh, Gary Huber? Yeah. Well, he's retired now, you know. He's retired, yeah. He was up there uh, in Dublin, in yes, Dublin. Yeah. And how about you? Were you married also in Columbus, Ohio? I thought maybe we'd have a theme here. No? Oh, Columbus wasn't good enough for you? What? We're in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Very good. Did the president marry you guys? No? no? Couldn't it couldn't come that day. Okay. How many years ago? 59. 59. And Jack, how about for you? Well, you know what? That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> Whatever she said. So, well, listen, so they got the lead. You know what that means? They have to give you advice so that you, Ken O'Hara, can, you know, be married 59 years. All right. Let's see if Jack can play this straight. 
What do you think? No. But we're going to try. All right. Take a deep breath, Jack. What is the secret so that they can have a great marriage like you? Really? <laughs> well, I do have a secret. Here it comes, Rabbi. Um, actually, there was an old man like myself, and it was a beautiful day. And he took Jack, this mic is really heavy. <laughs> Hold it, Rabbi. <laughs> And he took some bread, he went to the park, sat on the bench, and he was feeding the pigeons. Another elderly man came along, sat down, and they had a conversation. One man said to the other, are you married? He said, yes. How long? 36 years. Oh, that's nice. And how about you? He said, I'm married 50 years. Oh, you don't hear about 50 years anymore. That's absolutely marvelous. May I ask you, how did you stay married 50 years? He said, well, on our 25th wedding anniversary, I took my wife to Hawaii. And on our 50th wedding anniversary, I picked her up. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're, you're laughing a little too hard on that. <laughs> Del, Del finally got the joke. Okay, here we go. All right. You got, you got some real advice? Yes. Um, be patient, communicate, and get hearing aids when you need them. <laughs> that's good. I thought you were going to say laugh at all his jokes, even if you heard them five times, right? <laughs> but that's a good one. Okay. All right. Uh, you want to share some wisdom for anyone who's been married? Uh, well, Cantor's married in a few years. Give, give her advice. Uh, that we need some more advice here. What my father told me was, when you get married, you have a choice. You can be happy or right. <laughs> and you chose? And I chose right. <laughs> no, I chose happy. I'm joking. You chose to be happily right, right rightly happy. Okay. The operative, the operative phrase is yes, dear. Okay. Yes, dear. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, let's go ahead and have everyone rise as we share a special wedding blessing for these folks. Rabboni Shalom, Master of the Universe, as we come together as a community, it is good to share laughter, it is good to share love, for these are the building blocks of marriage. To be able to look in the mirror and smile and know that, well, you don't take yourself seriously, but yet life is many times serious. And so we are blessed when we have someone in our life who that we can share its burdens and share its joys. And so we ask as a community that each one of you shares many, many more years of happiness and joy together, and that the love that you have sustains you in health and in happiness for many, many years to come. We bless you with these words. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord God cause light of his countenance to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord God, grant you long life, happiness, and peace always. Amen, amen. Mazal Tov, congratulations. Good job, everyone. 
So last week we had Simchas Torah, and as you know, our tradition is to take the Torah and unroll it, and we can't hear chants from the end of the Torah and from the beginning. And this is done in congregations throughout, throughout the universe to teach us a lesson that you take the Torah and you turn it and turn it and turn it, and all wisdom is found therein. And it's a continual process throughout our lives. And as I'm standing here, it struck me that the words of the Torah, of course, don't change. There they are. Boom. But each year when we take our eyes and see the Torah, we change. And the state of mind, the state of life that we are in, is how we come forward to that Torah. And it speaks to us in different ways. How ironic, how symbolic, how, how you know, appropriate we read the story of Noah and the flood. It's a happy little story. In the next room in the social hall, they're dressed up as unicorns and animals, and it's a kid's story. It's a fairy tale. It's, it's a myth. It's, it's just glorious fun. And yet you will find in most cultures, most ancient religions, that there is a flood story. Because man did not live with certainty. Earthquakes, hurricanes, <coughs> floods, Wipe out a village. Change the destiny of a civilization. That was thousands of years ago. And as we learned today as well. I was in a meeting this week in San Francisco, and we had the PAR, which is the Pacific Air Reform Rabbis Report about Camp Newman. It's our camp. Thousand kids go there a summer, burned to the ground. Burned to the ground. Thank God, of course, they have insurance, but 23,000 homes burned. We had our mass shooting, there were hurricanes, there's tragedy, and, you know, I can see now when you read that story of Noah and the flood, well, the part we never teach them in religious school is when it was all said and done, he went out and got drunk. I mean, he, he just couldn't take it anymore. His world as he knew it was destroyed, and he had to start all over and become the new Adam and Eve, starting the world afresh. Well, I'm sure that Noah asked, as we ask, you know, why? Noah probably said, why me? The text tells us why Noah was picked, that he was a righteous man in his generation. He wasn't, you know, maybe by our standards, this great human being. We um, idolize, pun intended, Abraham as this epitome of the great human being. But Noah was a pagan, and he did believe in God. But he didn't say, hey, stop, God. Don't just save my family. Save everybody. Or, or save, save more. There's got to be more than just me. I can't bear to start the world anew. And so as we as a community have been going through our own calamity um, of the shootings, that has really touched every single family. You know, thank God no one in our congregation was killed, but many were at the concert. Everybody knows someone that was injured or killed. And so it continues to have its ripple effect throughout our community. And not once, not twice, but many times, people have come up to me and they say this question. Rabbi, do you think that the recent hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, mass shootings, etc., are a result of God showing us his displeasure? Now, this question could have been asked, and it was asked, in the time of the Bible. And here we are, scientifically educated, university educated people, and we're asking the same question. <coughs> Why? Why is it happening? So to me, when they ask that question, do you think that all these bad things are a result of God showing us his displeasure? At the heart of it is a desire to have a slightly different question altogether answered. 
which is why, why is this happening? So strong is the notion that our behavior is tied to nature that it is difficult to separate, even when common sense and science tells us differently. You look at the Bible, and it says over and over again, if you do this, good things will happen. You do that, bad things will happen. So we read it and we say, ah, of course. But we have, especially as Reformed Jews, we l look at that as ancient man's way of trying to understand the world. And we understand the world slightly different. And yet that notion that there is a connection between us and world events, it still lingers. Well, some of it is justifiable in the sense that there is such a thing called climate change, there is such a thing as pollution, there are many things that man has done that changes the climate in which we live. And so things that may have not have been so terrible now are terrible. Pieces of Antarctica breaking off, the list goes on and on. And so we hearken back to that story of Noah and how did it end with a breach, a promise. God says, when you look in the sky and you see the rainbow, I'll make a promise. I'm not going to destroy the world. But he was silent as to man's responsibility. We were the stewards of the world. We can and could destroy the world. The floods, the earthquakes, the nuclear bombs, all those awesome, terrible things, that's our responsibility. But God said, don't look at me to be subtle or not so subtle and direct the weather in order to tell you what I'm thinking. But the feeling persists. And there's a problem with that, in my opinion. I'll give you an example. If you connect the weather to God's displeasure, this is what you hear. A New Zealand pastor blamed earthquakes on homosexuals. Reverend Franklin Graham blamed Hurricane Katrina on the wild orgies in New Orleans. In 2010, Iranian clerics blamed women for earthquakes. Pat Robertson blamed the disaster in Haiti on the people making a pact with the devil. Pastor Kevin Swanson, a pastor in the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, insisted that the storm and storms such as Katrina and Sandy came from the hand of God because cities are generally liberal-leaning, which means they vote for more government, more abortion, and, of course, sexual perversion. So here you have it. Even if there is a part of us that says, why is this happening, Rabbi? As soon as you say, God is punishing you through the weather, this is what happens. You take your own moral judgments about what is right or wrong, and you justify it by a God that I don't think I could believe in. How could God cause fires to destroy 23,000 homes? Are all those people guilty? How can we have a mass shooting? Are all those people guilty of something? How can we have hurricanes and floods? Are all those people guilty of something? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It makes sense in the broader sense that we have control over our environment. But to associate morality in terms of the weather, no. That doesn't make sense to me. But worse than that, it creates a barrier between us and God. Because when bad things happen, be it illness or an earthquake, the death of a loved one, mass shootings, and we say it's God's raining his terror on us, how can we find the compassionate God? How can we find the strength and healing in our belief in God to bring a community, a family, a person, children, to a place of hope and love and healing. 
We can't do that without God. And not only that, if you say God is responsible for all those bad things and the shooter is an agent of God, if you say the Holocaust is God's punishment on the Jews for not keeping kosher, Hitler becomes an agent of God. And the list of other pastors' points of view doesn't make sense. Not logically and not religiously. So I made this point a couple weeks ago when I was on NPR. I was on an interfaith panel. And a caller called and almost stumped me. He said, Rabbi, I have a problem with what you're saying. Why are you taking all the bad stuff and absolving God from it and all the good stuff you're giving to God? So how can God be only responsible for good and not the bad? That doesn't make sense for me either. Why are you letting God off the hook? If your God is so good, how can he let that happen? It's a good question. And to a certain extent, it's a little bit of a stumper as well. So I'll, I'll tell you my initial answer, and I'm still thinking on it, because there is a certain challenge there. But my view of God is that describing God is almost impossible for us, and therefore we describe God in terms of metaphor. And for me, I, turn, I, I tend to describe God in terms of relationships, our relationship with God and what happens, and also our ability to see the world through eyes of faith. I'll give you an example. I'm sitting there with a group of rabbis, and they're talking about Camp Swig and how it burned down. And for a moment, they said what did not burn down. There's a big Jewish star on the hillside that all the kids look at when they wake up in the morning. Did not burn down. There are two arcs that go back to when I went to camp. It was called Camp Swig, made by the artist Helen, Helen Burke. I have one of her pieces. But she worked with the kids doing art, and they made two arcs. They did not burn down. There was a shed. All around the shed, everything burned to the side and below. But they opened the shed, and the children's prayer books were in there. And they didn't burn down. And so as they said this, you know, all of us are shedding a tear. And we're saying, this is what gives me strength. This is what gives me faith. And that's how it is with me. I tend to see the world in terms of the love and not the hate. Not the adversity, but the strength. I tend to see it in strangers helping strangers, community helping others, people waiting in line giving blood, people who understand that the world needs them. And when they understand that, they realize that they, just like Noah, have to be part of saving this world. And that's how it goes with me. And so anytime you think, why are these bad things happening? This world is going askew. Well, bad things can happen when the world goes askew, so get out there and do something about it. But weather, I think, is apolitical and amoral. And so when it rains and pours and floods and earthquakes happen, that's when God needs our partnership more than ever for us to stand up and to do our part to help people and not just sit around and say our prayers and think, I'm becoming a better person, and therefore I'm making a difference. Yes, that's a start. But being a better person means that you are mobilized into action and that your prayers take a purpose into deeds. And when that happens, I think God's rainbow shines upon us and smiles. Shabbat Shalom.
we begin to conclude our service on page 586 and rise for Alenu. Alenu le shabeach la don ha kol la teit gedula le otzer breshit shelo asanu kiruye haratzot velo samanu kimish bechot adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem vego alenu kecho hamonam vanachnu korim. Umishtachavim umodim Lifne melech malche hamlachim Hakadosh baruch hu Five hundred ninety eight is our Kaddish prayer. So we think of those who have died in recent days Thelma Cohen, Ron Richardson, Martha Davis, Chris Jensen, Hetty Manger, Faye Feldman, Alan Gardner, and Sally Barati. In the yard sites, we recall our Goldie Aberman, Al Honigman. Leo Beagleman, Meyer Bennett, Dr. Robert F. Beyer, Ida B Blumenfeld, Arthur Cohen, Miriam Cooper, Dr. Leon Danzig, Leo Frank, Erwin Gellin, Louis Goldberg, Gilbert Goldstein, Franklin Katz, Morris Kaufman, Saul Collins, Mildred Saywitz, Norman Kurzweil, A Anna Lader, David Lawrence, Larry Miller, Lois Pastrana, Rose Mazursky, Lawrence Rosenberg, Anna Rosenthal, Anne Sandell, Edward Sanoff, Mary Mace, Sitzer Rosen, Sylvia Slocum, Isidore Spector, Saul Stillman, and Philip Toffel. We think still of those who died in the tragic shooting of a few weeks ago. Would you like to say the name of someone who is not mentioned? Please simply stand and say their names. We think of all these and others who have touched our hearts. We rise to recite our Kaddish prayer. Yit Kadal vi Yit Kadash Shmei Raba vi Alma Divrach Yerute vi Amlich Malchute v'Chayechom v'Yomechom v'Chayedachol Be Yisrael Magalav is Mankari v'Maru Amen v'Heishmei Raba Mevorach v'Elam Omei Omaya Yit Barach v'Yishtabach v'Yit Paar v'Yit Romam v'Yit Nasei. Vitadar, Vitale, Vitalal, Shmei de Kusha, Brihu, Leila, Minkol, Berhata, Vishirata, Tush Behata, Venechemata, Dami Ram Yama, Vimru, Amen. Yeshlam Araba, Min Shamai Vahaim, Alena Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. O say Shalom, Bimramav, Huya say Shalom, Alena Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us and to all Israel, to which we say, Amen. You may be seated for a moment. So, a few things. Those of you who are early risers, including our guests, at 8.45, in that room, the library, I am going to be teaching the Torah class tomorrow morning. You are more than welcome to come. The, uh, following that, in the Beit Tefillah, there is a service, and Lily in the main sanctuary is going to be leading services at 10.30. So we have Torah study every week, and we encourage you to be a part. On Sunday, there is the JCC barbecue, and I believe we have a booth. Is that right, Cantor? Yes. Do you know the name of it? Limp Brisket. Limp Brisket? <laughs> Are you putting me on? Limp Brisket? Okay, who came up with that one? Not you? Okay. And who's in charge of this booth? All right. So I think they vote on the best brisket and the best, best booth and all that. So, uh, and the men's club. So, okay. So, where's it going to be at? Opportunity Village, right? Not the, oh, there's a different campus. Um, 
If you're going to go, go to the JCC website. website. Right Starts noon, noon to four-ish. There is an interfaith center in town called Still Point. They have asked me to teach a one-shot class. It is going to be on the meaning of Midrash. So whether you're Jewish or not, and you know someone who might want to take a class, I believe it is this Wednesday, and it's filling up fast. So go to the Still Point, give them a call. It's on the west side of town. It's going to be an interesting class. Uh, and then next Friday, what's next Friday? So we bookend Serenity Shabbat. We had one before the Holy Days, and now all the hagim, all the holidays are over. Cantor and I need some serenity. <laughs> all right? So come to that beautiful service. And then at the beginning of November, uh, we are uh, having something called Pride Shabbat, which is for the LGBTQT, if I got the initials right, to, to welcome them to our congregation, to be a welcoming congregation. And I'm going to be having a conversation on the BMO with um, Andre Wade, who is the director of, quote, the center. The center is the center for the uh, LBGQT community here in town. They have a building and resources, and we're going to have a great conversation. And then afterwards, if all goes well, during the Oneg, uh, different folks are going to man different tables, and they're going to share their stories with anyone who wants to, to listen. So we hope we're going to get a good showing next two Fridays, but especially for Pride Shabbat. Those are my commercials. Can't oh, we got some wine. Lily, come on up with your friends. Friends, family. All right. All right. Very good. We'll conclude with Ose Shalom. Thank you again to Ricky Reinhardt. Thank you so much. Again, welcome to our special guests and anyone who is new tonight um, who is not part of the B'nai Mitzvah, the Bat Mitzvah family. Anyone new visiting for the first time? Where are you visiting from? You live here now? In California. And tell us your names. Diane and John Levin. Very nice. Welcome. Brian, Ann, and Kristen, welcome, welcome. Redondo Beach, very nice. You're going to come every week. Just you're just going to keep driving. Just uh, well, you know some figured. of our friends do. That's so. right. That's right. Redondo Beach, very good. Yes. <laughs> Kansas City, very good. All right. Anyone here from San Pao? Sao Paulo, did I say it right? Where are they from? I almost said it correct. Just left it. Brazil. <laughs> All right. How do you say welcome? Ben. It was really close. Ben right? Vino. You say it then. <laughs> Give it a try. Mocking me out. Ricky, you can do it. Weren't you in South America for a while? Campinas. Yeah, he was on mission. All right, how about some Ose Shalom and some okay, uh, here we go. Oneg? Ose Shalom bim Roma, who Ose Shalom aleinu, vea ko Yisrael, vea ko Yoshve Tevel, veimru. Amen. 
Shabbat Shalom, everybody.